Good morning, this is Kelly Hobart from Alpaca Direct and I'm here on Technique Tuesday and we're going to continue to talk about baubles, which is a shawl pattern written by Andrea Mowry. And it's been a great knit. It has some nice little stripes on it and you can see the stripes here. And I am just starting my Cinco Brioche, the second part. And it's coming along nicely. I'm hoping this next week I'll be able to work on it a little bit more and get it finished. But next week we can talk about the finishing, um, the end of the shawl. And you'll be able to see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like on Andrea Maori. I don't have the full color picture of it because all of our copies have sold out. <laughs> <laughs> so we are very excited to get more in stock. And when is that coming in, Jim? Hopefully by the end of the week. Yes, so we'll have more patterns in then. Um, but if you've never tried brioche before, this is a really fun project. Andrea, if you haven't done any of her patterns before, they're very well written and they are easy to follow. So for any of you out there that haven't tried brioche before or maybe haven't done uh, lace patterns yet. Uh, it gave you a great chance to be able to do both of those things using a fingering white yarn and you can make yourself a lovely shawl for the summertime knit. Now when I have knit mine, I made mine from this comfort sock and I'm using three different colors of comfort sock and if you look here it's 50% super fine nylon and 50% acrylic and um, it does not not have a shine to it. If you look at the yarns, can you give a close-up on it, Jim? No shine to this yarn. And let's see if we can show you the multis. And it's super comfortable against your skin. So if you have people maybe who are allergic to wool, this is a great option for you to be able to make a beautiful shawl. Plus, it's a lot less expensive, right? So you can make this whole shawl for right around $30, which is a really good value um, if you know how expensive some of the hand-painted yarns can be. So as we're going along, don't forget we have a... Um, we have a prize every week. And for this last week, it was for this comfort sock. I thought maybe I'd get it in your guys' hands so you could try it out in the red color or the multi. And I think our, um, you guys have voted and chose the red color. So that'll be great for this week. And then for this next week, we have the Sasquatch yarn. This is a hand-painted yarn. And I really like the peachy, which is the tonal colorway, or the multicolor, um, the gold multi. Um, so you guys have to vote and let me know. And by posting comments in the comment section, maybe you're going to let us know what you're working on. If you do that, do include the name of the pattern and the designer because we might use it in a future um, Technique Tuesday or I might just enjoy knitting it. And some of you might get great ideas from those comments as well. So we're all in this together and learning. And so we want to make sure and share this with each other. And um, don't forget to post those comments so you can get signed up to win the prize. Hey, Kelly, yes. Why don't you go back to that because they, they may not know what that is, the brand. Oh, the Sasquatch yarn? Yeah, it's oh, yes. It's, it, it is a, they call it a sock yarn, but it's great for shawls and socks. And it's 80% superwash merino, which means it's machine washable merino with 10% cashmere and 10% nylon, which makes it a really nice, soft sock yarn. <laughs> I love the cashmere in there. So, um, and we have a local uh, dyer that dyes this for us, and she does an excellent job with the dyeing. Very vibrant colorways, yeah, very pretty. Yarns. Yes, mm -hmm. called Sasquatch. So that is the prize for this week, and you guys get to choose which one. So as I was knitting this shawl, <laughs> I certainly did not get as much time knitting as I wanted to, but um, I was enjoying myself this morning working on it. And I got to the second, um, this right in here is called Cinco Brioche, and um, it's an unexpected chain. So where these uh, knit stitches are coming out in the multicolor way, they are now coming out in the white colorway. So at the back, see how the white's there? And then the white comes in front. And so it is 
totally cool. It, I had to restart it like three different times because I thought maybe I was doing something wrong. But then I kept staring at the pattern. And some people, if you look on Ravelry at the different projects, which is where I like to go to look at all the different projects, because whenever I get confused about something, I want a close up of the actual project that I'm working on so I can see what it is that they knit. And so some people had the purple and then it went straight into the white. They did not um, change the knits into pearls and the um, pearls into knits. And so um, I had to actually go back to a close-up of Andrea Mowry wearing her shawl. This wasn't the exact picture, but she had a very close-up picture of this. And it showed me what she was trying to do. So then I knew, nope, I'm not messing up. It's actually the way she wrote it. You know how I sometimes talk about um, trust the pattern and just knit it? And sometimes you need to not try to second guess it or try to fix it because <laughs> the designer actually wants you to do something and it may be different than what you think. Um, and so I was able to do that and got it started and it, and she was correct the pattern was correct that's another thing i was looking for is to see if there's errata which means mistakes in the pattern and usually on the if i w went to ravelry and i went to the pattern that said bobbles which this shawl is called then i could see at the bottom it'll give me a link for all the errors that might be in the pattern and it this was not didn't was not listed as an error in the pattern so I knew that it was correct. So I went ahead and knit it and it worked out fine and it was good. And you know, it just goes to show you that even the best of us can overthink things and try to change patterns when we really shouldn't. We should just knit what we see. So that was uh, a learning experience for me because sometimes, you know, I get um, trying to anticipate what I think they want me to do. And sometimes that's not correct at all. That's not a good idea. <laughs> Matter of fact, I've gotten myself into trouble, right, Jim? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember the time? Oh my gosh. Okay, so I got to tell you about the time that we had this little, the kids' ATV, and it was raining outside, and we we're trying to get it in the back of the truck. And, and I'm watching my husband, and he's being very, very careful, and we're, it's pouring rain. It's like, let me just drive it into the truck. <laughs> right, we Jim? We had a ramp, right? Yes, we had a ramp, and, and I was going to drive it up the ramp, a little kid's ATV, into the back of my dually, one-ton dually, right? Which I'm very picky about. I never wanted any scratches or marks or anything on it. And so I drew, I was driving it up into the truck and all of a sudden Jim and um, my sister dropped the back end of the ATV and it went wham, straight forward and went right through. <laughs> it didn't exactly go through the back window, but it actually bent the box of the bed of the pickup truck. So here I was thinking I was so smart that I could drive it into the truck and, you know, avoid all these, this long wait. <laughs> it turned out to be a bad idea. <laughs> So anyway, before you jump to conclusions, think about it a minute. <laughs> and, and, you know, because I'm great for doing that. So I can totally uh, relate to that problem. So here I was thinking that maybe we could talk about steam blocking acrylics. So you think of an acrylic, it's not a natural fiber. You can't just get it wet and let it lay there a little while and um, expect that it's, you know, going to do what it's supposed to do. But steam blocking is a great way to get your project to look really good when it's acrylic and do, be kind of an effortless thing. So I started looking up on uh, YouTube to see what other people were doing for steam blocking. And you know those uh, steam blockers that are like a handheld steam blocker? Well, I saw them using that on it and I'm sitting there thinking now, how many of us knitters actually have that, what is it? Not quite a hundred dollar contra contraption, but a more expensive contraption um, to do the steam blocking as opposed to maybe just using a regular iron. So I thought, Jim, I'm just going to see if we can't steam block using our regular iron and get our project to look good. So the first thing that I did is you can't really see it, but this is damp. I put it in the kitchen, um, in the bathroom sink here in the office and got it damp. And then I just wrung out some of the water and laid, laid it out flat. And then I got this little washcloth and I got it damp. 
And what I did, if I was really doing it at home, I would take this washcloth that's damp, instead of just um, putting it in warm water, I'd put it in the microwave for 30 seconds because that would get the washcloth really warm, right? Mm -hmm. Not too warm, but warm. Not warm enough to mess with your acrylics. And then you can just kind of set it over the top of your project that you want. And I don't know how hot my iron is right now. Oh yeah, it's plenty warm. But if you see, I'm just kind of putting my iron over the top of that washcloth, but I'm not, uh, I am holding the full weight of the iron so that I don't um, have the iron uh, touching, really touching the project. So that's how easy it is to steam block. Do you see my uh, washcloth was actually kind of steaming? And so you want to get a little steam on there, but what you don't want to do is squish it down. And you just want to kind of go over it a little bit. That would be a bummer if you melted it, huh? Oh, and you could do that. You do not want to touch any parts of this acrylic with the iron. Because you can really mess it up. But you can see, you want to get it warm and blocked and even out those stitches. And you can go over it a few times. So just making really sure not to put too much pressure on it. And just kind of very lightly... Maybe go back and forth, straight and up and down. This is one of the questions that came in, I think. Too. Yeah. But you see, and then we can just take it off and take a look at it. It starts evening out the stitches. Isn't that cool? So that's how I would steam block my projects when they're acrylic and I'm at home and I'm using what I have at home. Not, not going out to buy a fancy steamer just for acrylic yarns. Um, I would use what I had at home and use my iron. Also, another thing that I like to do is if I needed to and I didn't want to dip it in the sink, I have my spray bottle with water in it and a little tiny bit of starch. And I could just spritz it with the spray bottle and then, again, uh, put the towel over the top, making sure this, this little wash house is going to make sure that your iron does not touch the acrylic because you don't want to burn it. Also, oh, i got to show you this little trick. So I have these socks that I was working out, and I needed to take the yarn out. And do you see how it gets really wrinkly? Sometimes when we're knitting projects and we have to remove something, it makes the yarn really super wrinkly, right? Well, I discovered this little trick when I was messing around with this. <laughs> and, and what I did is I, I just got it just a little tiny bit. Maybe I could just take my washcloth and get a little tiny bit damp. Just don't touch your... Don't touch my shawl. Yes, true story. And then um, what I found is that if I take my iron and I just kind of lay it on here. This is a wool yarn, right? Yes, this is wool. This is superwash too, right? Mm-hmm, a superwash. Okay. But do you see something? Do you see that? It totally ironed the yarn out. I'm like, oh, I could have used this so many different ways. <laughs> Do you see how it ironed your yarn? <laughs> Look, it's flat and it's ready to use again. Isn't that awesome? I totally, when I saw that, I went like, oh, oh, that's really cool. I didn't know that I could do that. Just run it underneath the, yarn, the iron and it does not hurt the wool at all. Awesome. Anyway, that's a little trick that I learned. So I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, and another thing that, I, oh, I got my pattern all wet. Okay, another thing I wanted to talk about with this bobbles pattern is when I was knitting it, I was knitting the Cinco Brioche, um, this part two, and then the Cinco Swap, and it said, repeat rows one A and B and two A and B four more times. Well, I did that, and then I had like, I don't know, not enough stitches. So I kept repeating it until I had the two stitch increase per repeat, which was 101 total stitches. So I thought that might be important to um, note for you. If you should lose count when you're repeating the uh, sections, make sure you at least have the correct stitch count before you go to the next pattern part, because I'm sure that'll make a difference in what she's trying to design, especially when she starts doing the bobbles and the increases and decreases for that um, section because it needs so many um, stitches to be able to complete that. And then, um, yeah, she, this, this pattern is, even though it's only, let's see how many pages it is. 
it is like eight or nine pages. But in a lot of Andrea Mowry's, Mowry's pattern, it'll say repeat section one through 20 four more times. <laughs> and you're like, darn, and I thought I was gonna get done with page five <laughs> or whatever. But it's, um, it seems like it's not that much, but it can be quite a bit. <laughs> so um, anyway, but I really do enjoy the Andrea Mowry pattern. So if you haven't seen them before, it's totally awesome. And using this, I, I really am enjoying this yarn. I know some people say that it is splitty or what have you, um, but I've enjoyed knitting with it. I haven't had a huge problem with it. Um, so it, it is totally awesome. So um, you can see on here and then on the back, see how pretty it is on both sides of the shawl. Very, very pretty. I like her patterns. I don't know if for the beginning knitter, do, using this multicolored where it has some white, do you see? I, sometimes I'd be knitting along and it would have a bunch of white and I'd go, uh oh, I'm using the wrong yarn. But I wasn't. It's just it has white patches amongst the color. And that can be confusing for beginning knitters to brioche. So um, maybe just using solid colors and not the multicolors for beginners might be a good way to do it. But if you want to give gifts for um, people and they live places that are warm, like Florida or something like that, having a shawl like this that's not going to get them too hot is, um, would make a great gift. Where if you try to give them wool or alpaca or something like that, you might, they might be blowing steam out their ears. <laughs> it wouldn't be too good. <laughs> so anyway, I, yeah, I really, really like uh, this pattern. It's lots of fun. You guys, um, let's see where we are you for. to vote on that. They were wondering about the colors for the, this week. So this one? Vote, okay, know, sure. What do they do to vote? So um, for the, to vote for, to get, to win the prize for this, which is one of these skins of yarn, you have to post comments in the comment section and let us know what you're working on. Don't forget to give us the name of the pattern because we read it. And then maybe it gives me ideas about things to knit or uh, future Technique Tuesdays that we can work on if it's really, um, you know, noteworthy. It's so totally fantastic. They, they so pick? this one is a multi. Multi yellow or something? Or? Uh, you could just say multi. Mm -hmm. And this is a tonal. Well, and peach. Peach. So yeah. Peach then maybe. Yeah. But the yarn's really beautiful. It makes great socks. Um, and um, using sock yarn, it, you guys know that sock yarns are not just for socks. They make great shawls. And um, I, I, I'm not even, well, I guess they call it sock yarn because it has a bit of nylon in it for durability, which even makes a better shawl. <laughs> <laughs> what are the names of the colorways, too? Yeah, so, um, that, let's see, this one is called Peaches and Cream, and it's very peachy and very pretty, I like it. And then this other one is called Unicorn, and our local dyer does a great job of dyeing the yarns for us, and it's really a pleasure to work with. I've worked with this yarn quite a few times now, and I really enjoy it. So, it's totally That's fantastic Sasquatch, yarn. Right? Yep, Sasquatch. Mm-hmm. And let's look and see who the winner was. So this was the winning yarn, the Comfort Sock in the red colorway. And let's see if we have a uh, winner here. Oh, it's Jackie Snyder. Yay, Jackie, you won. This is awesome yarn. It makes for a beautiful baby sweater, or you could make socks out of it, or you can make a shawl out of it. I don't know, I hope you enjoy it. Um, all you have to do is let us know at customer service your address and we can get this shipped out in the mail to you. And what is so, your comfort, sock? comfort sock, two skeins in the uh, red colorway. Very nice yarn, I like it, I'm enjoying it. Um, so, yes, we're gonna look at our uh, questions and answers for this week. And um, the first question was, What's the easiest way to go backwards when knitting brioche? Well, first of all, the easiest thing to do is drop lifelines every few rows so you don't have to go backwards very far. Um, but if you should have to go backwards, I'll show you just a little bit of how I go backwards. I'm gonna come over here, Jim. So, say I wanna go backwards on my brioche. 
first of all, when I wanted to point something out to you. When you have to count stitches, maybe um, you have to 101 stitches you're supposed to have on your needles and you want to check and see. What you want to remember is this yarn over and the knit stitch are considered one. So between here and here, that's considered one stitch. Then this is considered one stitch. Then that's considered one stitch. So when I'm counting, what I like to do is count in multiples of five. So we have three stitches right here and then two more. So that is five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five. So I would go five, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 15. So that's how I'd, how I'd count the stitches. Now let's look and see if we can go backwards. When I go backwards in brioche, you have to find where the yarns are on the side first. <clears throat> and a lot of times people lose track of actually where they're knitting in brioche. And so the first thing I would notice on my needles is that I have my yarn overs are in white. So I sh when I'm going backwards, I should be using white yarn to go backwards because that's how I know what I have worked. So I go straight into the stitch, open it up. That one is a slip stitch. And then this one is a yarn over brioche pearl. So I open that stitch up and go straight into it. And then that one's a slip, this one's a brioche pearl, that one's a slip, this one right here is a brioche pearl, a slip, a brioche pearl, and a slip. Oop. Now, if I was going to go ahead and knit that into a, a brioche pearl, I would go slip, yarn over, pearl. Slip yarn over, purl. Slip yarn over, purl. Slip yarn over, purl. Slip yarn over, purl. And that last stitch is slip. And that is how you do the brioche purl when you're doing it along and how you can go backwards in your knitting in brioche. What I would recommend though is for uh, brioche, in the beginning people have a hard time taking brioche out. Usually what beginning brioche knitters do, and I know this because I've had a lot of uh, students try and do brioche, they will get stuck, mess it up, and take the whole thing out. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why I keep saying dropping lifelines um, can be very handy dandy. And lifeline is nothing more than threading a thin strand of yarn with a darning needle right through all of these stitches that are on the needle. So that you, if you get stuck want for a couple rows down, uh, you know, you've knitted a few more rows and you've made a mistake, then you can just go back to where the lifeline is and get your stitches back on your needle correctly. You can post a video. You can post a link to a video you did on that too. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's totally cool. Um, all right. And then our next um, question and answer was, how do I know what yarns work best for the project I want to knit? Well, the first thing I would do is I'd Google it. Google the project and see what yarn that they used. If you want your project to look exactly like the picture in the pattern, you should use either the same yarn or at least the same, a similar twist, a similar yarn content and a similar weight and the same needles that were required in the pattern. And then you should get a similar look. Unless of course, um, there are examples. Maybe some projects are knit with Noro that are um, hand dyed and very vibrant colors. Well, if it's Noro Silk Garden, for instance, and it tells you to use that yarn, there is not a good substitute for it. Use the yarn that is in the pattern. If you like the look of Noro Silk Garden, use Noro Silk Garden. But there are like these sock yarns these type of sock yarns that are hand painted, 
you, if they're that kind of a yarn, then you can pick any kind of uh, sock yarn that is hand painted, that is uh, fingering weight, that has the same kind of ply and the same twist, and it should look similar. You just choose whatever color options you want. So um, that is how you can do it. Also, another couple of questions. We know for family members and some people in our family, we would only use um, machine washable yarn because if we use delicate fibers, they would just throw it in the wash machine and ruin it on the first time out, the first time that it got dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not good. But you can also look at, you know, there are really good superwash merino wools now that are quite um, sturdy and like Sueno is a good one that you can use for um, people who would machine wash stuff and it would tolerate a little bit of abuse. But if you know your yarns, and a lot of times at the local shops, if you call them up and ask that question and tell them what you're looking for, um, then you can get a nice product and they'll be able to tell you because uh, a lot of yarn shops really do know their yarns well and so they can help you out that, that way. Um, is, oh, okay. Is learning how to knit socks a skill that is worth learning? Learning how to knit socks is not just knitting socks. It's, um, it's actually the method that I like to use is the two at a time toe up method for knitting socks using um, Judy's Magic Cast On and um, the uh, Magic Loop method. But it is, you can do so many things with it. You can use it to make uh, two hats for charity, for instance. Maybe you have a pattern that you really like and you want to make several in that pattern. Well, you can just line them up on a long needle and do several of them at a time. And that way you can um, get your work done faster, right, Jim? You've mm -hmm. seen me do that before, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've had four baby slippers that I was doing at a time using that method, and they're all stacked up on the needles. But when I'm done, they're exactly alike, and they look wonderful. And so it's a, it's a quick way of getting your work done and also I think in a way um, you can save some money if you learn those techniques because you don't have to have double points for the top of the hat and um, you you don't have to buy all these different supplies you can use if you use the 40 or 47 inch needle like I do you can use everything from making hats to making sweaters with that one cord length and so it's very cost effective it's, it's good for summer, you said before. Too. Yeah, and knitting socks is a great project for summertime because you're not lugging around big, heavy yarns that are hot. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've tried to knit when it was like 100 degrees and I'm taking a, a pillowcase and putting it over my lap so the wool doesn't touch my skin because I'm too hot to tolerate it. <laughs> too funny. Anyways, but yeah, learning socks is just like any other skill. It's fun. And if you learn how to do it, you'll enjoy it because there are so many different things that you can branch off into. There's so many different heels to learn. There's different toes to learn. There's, oh, the sky is the limit. You know, you can do color work socks that are beautiful. I have, um, my daughter's husband just loves bright and colorful socks. And so being able to make um, those really wild socks um, is stuff that he enjoys. So maybe you have a family member like that that'll enjoy that. So, yeah. Doing socks is fun, and um, I really do enjoy it. So for this next week, we are going to be finishing up on our shawl, and hopefully I'll be wearing it by then. And we can go over the last few stitches that I'm going to learn, and maybe um, any pitfalls or anything that was a little um, iffy for me or a little um, that I had to think a couple times about. And I'll, we'll talk about those and what solutions I found so that it will make it easier for you to knit the project. And I hope that you guys have a great week because it's finally nice weather here, huh, Jim? Okay. It, was, <laughs> it was really pretty warm, but then it got cold, then it was warm, then it's cold. So now I think we are having a little warm weather to 80s. stay. Yay! <laughs> I can wear shorts without having to dig a jacket out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm very excited about that. So I hope you all have a great week, and I will see you next 